Let's take a look at some prototype Hero Factory sets from across many years of Hero Factory and see what changed from those early conceptualizations to when it became the final set. So many of these images are fascinating. It really is cool to see what could have been. And mate, the prototype images for one of my favorite Invasion from Below sets. Oh baby, it's incredible. Stay tuned for that one. Anyway, let's get started. Let's begin things off with that awesome prototype for Witch Doctor. So, you know, for the most part, everything's pretty similar, but the biggest difference has to be this staff. You know, the final set had more of a, like, almost baby rattle for the weapon for Witch Doctor, while the prototype has this larger, like, voodoo staff. And the best part about this? Check out that sick black skull Witch Doctor mask on the top of the staff. Hot dang, that's so pretty. I mean, yeah, sure, the original weapon had a duplicate mask in white, and that was lovely. It was good to get two of his masks. But can you imagine if that was black instead? That would have been such a good recolor. I can see it now, all sorts of cool black skeleton marks. Man, that would have been sick. Looking at it here, it almost looks like the mask is like possessed with some kind of magical power. It's just so unique. Now, Christian Faber also posted this cool landscape photo of the Savage Planet wave of Hero Factory sets. And if you zoom in a little bit here in the corner, we can see a silhouette of Witch Doctor and it appears that they have that exact same voodoo staff. So a little bit extra confirmation that that image is legit. Faber also shared this early promotional image, which is a sick looking logo. I also love that Witch Doctor has a top hat. I don't know if this means that Witch Doctor at one point was going to have a top hat, or you know, this maybe is just like a silly fun image that doesn't really mean anything. Still, could you imagine an official Bionicle top hat piece? <laughs> that would have been so cool. I can imagine all the edgelord marks with top hats now, it's beautiful. And we've got one more Witch Doctor prototype here. We can see uh, quite a lovely looking poster here for the Savage Planet Wave of Hero Factory. Again, this was posted by Christian Faber. I mean, it's beautiful, but if we zoom in at the bottom here, we can see a silhouette of a larger character. Now, I assume this is an early design for Witch Doctor. The silhouette has some like shaman vibes, and maybe that was an aesthetic they were thinking of going with for Witch Doctor. Or it could just be some other random character. It's hard to say, I'm purely speculating here. Now, this silhouette, it reminds me of a mock that Brick Thing made. The way they've used some rubber bands and other different Lego plant pieces, it's such a magnificent mix of system and Bionicle pieces. So maybe early Witch Doctor was gonna look a little something like this. Or not. It's hard to say what this is. This could just be a fun little sketch, who knows. Still, it's interesting to look at. Let's change things up a bit and go back to the start of Hero Factory. We've got a lovely fake newspaper here that I assume was just meant to be some fun advertising or world building imagery or whatever. Maybe you could have found this on lego.com or something. But check out this early image of Von Nebula's mask up the top here. It looks like the designers maybe used Maxilos's mask and then cut all sorts of different spiky pieces and glued it on top. It's fascinating to see what they were thinking of doing here, especially since the final mask that we got for Von Nebula was just Hydraxon's mask, but in black. I guess maybe the spiky look of that prototype just evolved into adding those pincers on the side of the mask. And you know, maybe for budget reasons, they were gonna do a completely new mask and they went, ah, can't really afford it, let's just recolor Hydraxon's mask, it's cheaper. Maybe, I don't know, but it makes sense, right? But yeah, man, I kind of love what they were going with here. It's certainly an interesting vibe. I would have loved to have seen a totally new, different mask for Von Nebula. Now here's an early prototype of Thunder. We can see some early designs here uh, for this larger panel shield piece. First off in this image, it's completely blank. There's no stickers on it, although that could be expected for an early prototype here. But if we take a closer look, we can see there are some subtle like textural differences on these pieces. It also looks like Thunder's mask was a little bit different at one point. It looks like they've almost got a goatee on their chin. And even some of the shape of the mouth is a little bit different. Uh, that's interesting, isn't it? Now another Faber classic here is this old promo poster. And man, I love the dorky smile on this dude. I imagine this is meant to be an early Ferno. It could also just be a random red hero, uh, who knows. Now I also love all the blasters that are strapped onto this guy. Two on the belt, one on the back, it's sick. Heroes with heaps of blasters, it's always a pretty cool aesthetic. Although the dog peeing on the leg of this hero, that's uh, well, you know. I suppose it's good that they did away with that kind of humor later on in Hero Factory. Although if we did get a little CCBS dog, that would have been really cool. Although if it had a little built-in peeing feature, maybe less cool. I doubt we were ever gonna get a CCBS dog. I think this is just a early, early concept image that's communicating a vibe and has a little joke in it there. But we can dream. On the subject of red armored heroes, here's what appears to be early box art for Ferno, or rather Blaze. It seems that at one point the character would have actually been called Blaze, William Blaze, not William Ferno. 
I actually far prefer Therno. I think it's a much better name. But it's cool that they changed that up and were thinking something else. And also, it looks like they changed it up pretty late in the game. This box art looks pretty close to finalized. Certainly not early on in the design process. Well, at least from the vibes I'm getting from it. One of the coolest prototypes here is early Fire Lord. He had poseable fingers at one point. That's very similar to Hydraxon. And let's be honest, poseable fingers would have made Fire Lord a thousand times cooler. It would have taken him to a whole new level of cool. I wish they'd kept that on the final set, man. How good would that have been? But that being said, it's easy enough to like modify Fire Lord and add that yourself. All the pieces that have been used for those fingers, they're all existing pieces. Now the set also had some trans orange armor at one point. This could have maybe been a placeholder for the printed armor that was gonna come on the final set. Or maybe they wanted to give him this really sick fire armor vibe. And also check out his foot design here. It's a little bit different. It's almost like a tripod design. It's funny, the, the final leg here, it had those exposed ball joints. It almost looks like they just like forgot to put the armor on. I very much doubt that they forgot to put armor on, but it kind of looks that way when you see this prototype type, doesn't it? Now a few other fun prototype images here, also from Christian Faber, they include this sick Invasion From Below poster. I love the kaiju movie vibes going on here. We also have a sick Invasion From Below hoodie. 10 out of 10 would buy. Honestly, I'd buy both of these if these actually existed. Now we also have some early breakout Ferno packaging. The torso here is unprinted, but that kind of just makes sense. This looks like pretty early concept stuff, so they probably just hadn't got around to designing the flames that would later be on that torso. But the interesting thing here is at the bottom of the packaging, there's a separate image here that showcases what was Evo holding some handcuffs, but holding the handcuffs, which you can't do on the final set. So I wonder if this means at one point they were designing these so that they could be held on the standard hero hand. Or this could just be a random image and that was never the case. Now Faber also shared these last two images here. This epic poster of Invasion From Below sets, it's wonderful, such a dynamic feeling to this image. Now we can see that Evo's mech at one point had a trans orange cockpit. I think I do prefer the trans brown one that we had on the final set though, to be honest. And looking at the images on the bottom of the poster here, the minifigure for Rocker is actually piloting Evo's mech. So I wonder if at one point they were debating making this Rocker's mech instead of Evo's, or maybe they just goofed and accidentally put Rocker inside the machine when they should have put Evo inside. Yeah, it could just be like a placeholder or something, couldn't it? It's hard to say, but still, it's interesting to see. And finally, the best prototype image. And in surprisingly crystal clear image quality, we have a prototype of the Queen Beast set. And here it is. Ah, oh, this is so cool. So at first we weren't going to get that interesting spider mech that Evo has that we see in the final set. No, we were going to get bulk in this much larger cooler mech. I adore these armor pieces here on the bottom leg. Look at the printing that's on there. That would have been such a good piece if that actually had come out in the final set. Now I do like the look of this mech, but I think I do slightly prefer the look of that spider mech. It's just a little bit more easy to read and it just looks cooler. Also check out these early minifigures. The heads look kind of like bubble heads. They're a little bit too big, but you know, this is early prototyping. I imagine what happened is that they just got the like 3D file for the original masks and then shrunk them down to minifigure scale and then 3D printed them and put them on top of a minifigure body. And then they realized, yeah, we can't just shrink it down. We're gonna need to like fully redesign that headpiece. Again, I'm assuming, but it kind of makes sense that that could be what happened. I also love these cool gold armor pieces on Queen Beast's head and also on her shoulders. The one on the head really does look like some type of crown and the one on the shoulders, it just looks like sick armor. It's great to see these pieces working perfectly for their intended use when their intended use is pretty different on both areas that it's used. Such a versatile piece, this would have been amazing if we'd actually got it. We got something similar on the final set, but it was only seen on the top of the head. It was just a gold recolor of an already existing piece. But if they had brought out this new element, I would have loved it. Yeah, so much interesting stuff happening in this image. I'm in love with it. So there you go. That's a look at all sorts of different Hero Factory prototypes from across many different waves of Hero Factory. Hopefully taking a look at these gave you a little bit of inspiration. Some of this stuff you could easily rebuild yourself today with existing pieces. Or if you've got a 3D printer, maybe you could 3D print some of these things and bring these prototypes to life. Or maybe you could go and paint Witch Doctor's mask black and rebuild that voodoo stuff. That'd be pretty cool. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Happy building and bye for now.